what's up guys your flight sim cfi here uh we we'll go over a quick little video today on the autopilot and c172 and x plane 11. so right now just doing some mouse flying here uh, around collingwood ontario canada just north of toronto and i'll show you how to set up the autopilot here so first things first we'll get ourselves level bear with me here i never fly with the mouse Right, so we're, we're still in a little bit of a climb, not the climb, as long as we're not going to get ourselves into a spin right now. Airspeed's good, then we're just climbing. All right. So first things first, we have our heading bug set, so we're going to want to set up our, our heading. So we'll use our heading. So now the autopilot's going to capture heading. We know that that's on because we have a little bit of a roll indication, which would be right to line us up. And now we are straight on the turn coordinator and roll indicator and now we are following the heading bug. Okay, next thing, we're in a climb but we want to stop that climb at a specific altitude. Okay, uh, so first thing that we're going to want to do here, if we hit if we hit L, altitude right now, all that's going to happen is going to level us. Okay, now because this autopilot is not set up to capture a specific altitude, what we have to do is we have to we have to set it up like so we gotta do our vertical speed. Okay, these are hundreds of feet, so we'll do let's say climb at 500 feet, okay, per minute. So we're climbing at 500 feet per minute. Once we get to the desired altitude that we want to be at, we're gonna do an altitude hold. So how we do that is we just click the altitude button. Okay, so let's say we want to go up here to 2800 feet at 2800 feet just before we click out we're going to level off we can throttle back to a cruise power setting and now we're going to hold at 2800 feet okay so there we've we've used our heading uh, bug to hold our constant heading we've used our vertical speed the vs we've selected positive rate of climb or 500 feet whatever or then we've stopped our climb okay so we pulled altitude and then let's say we wanted to descend we hit the same thing vertical speed and we just go into the negative negative 500 feet per minute now we'll descend to any desired altitude once we're at that altitude we out and this here is just showing that it's going to trim it's automatically trimming for us to hold that altitude that we wanted it to hold at. next button across here is our navigation button so that would be we have two different navigation options technically three but we'll go over two um so if we wanted to do let's get this back cruise power setting Um, so if we wanted to use a uh, our GPS to navigate to Pokemon, okay, so we're going to go here, direct to, and we'll bring ourselves back to CNY3, which is Collingwood Airport, N, Y, 3. Now, we can put any waypoint we want into this, we can also put a VOR into it. So it's going to now tell us that CNY3 is in Canada, Collingwood Airport. It's GPS location, or it's north and west, Latin law. And the course. We hit enter, activate gets highlighted, we hit enter again. And that executes it. So now we're, it's saying that we want to fly direct there. If I bring this wing out, it, it's tough to see, but it's behind us now, okay? Now, well, we're in this heading direction. We're actually going in the opposite direction. So, first thing, if I just hit, so, sorry, we'll, we'll step back. Right here we're in V-Lock, okay? So that's using our localizer, which we be using our VO. Okay, so that'd be any, any sort of radio navigation. If we hit CDI, it's gonna switch to GPS, okay? We get a message here. It's going to say set course to one five zero. So this up here is going to sh is our navigational 
uh, aids here. So if we set this now to 150, okay, and we hit this navigation button, it's going to turn us to follow that direct two that we put in. Now you're going to ask, hey, well, what? Why is it leveling up? It's not really turning. It's kind of trying to figure itself out. you got to remember that our course was facing in the opposite way. The easiest way to do this would be to turn our heading indicator, keep ourselves on heading mode, because that will give us a rate one turn, and turn to a heading of 150. You can see how much more efficient this turn is as opposed to the last one. It was kind of getting confused. The GPS didn't know which way it was really supposed to go because it was directly behind us. So now we can see the magenta line coming in now on the GPS. And we can actually see our airport CNY3 there. Now once we've turned a heading of 150, even at this time now, our GPS is going to understand what's going on in our autopilot. We hit navigation. It's now going to turn as normal. Pick up that magenta line and take us to the waypoint of Charlie Yankee November 3. Or sorry, Charlie November Yankee 3. Okay. So all is good with that. The approach here, the approach here would be if you're doing an IFR approach. Let's say we're using, again, Collingwood Airport. We can hit this procedure. We can select an approach. We can do the RNAV into runway 3. Okay, and then you have your transitions. So you have Kirab and the vectors. Okay, so we select our Kirab. Let's say we're going to do it now. We can activate. Now, because we already had this on nav mode, it's going to capture and go right to Kirab. All approach mode is, is going to do is it's going to activate the step downs. Uh, now this here doesn't really have a good vertical navigation. However, it's going to show everything on here. It's going to set ourselves into approach mode. Um, it's going to show us our appropriate altitudes to be at, uh, which is this cross member here. Uh, when doing our step down into a three. If you're getting into IFR approaches like that, you're a little past getting used to how to use the autopilot system. The rev is just a reverse, you just reverse track. And again, we went over altitude and a vertical speed. So that's really how you're gonna use the GPS or the um, autopilot. Now, if you did wanna use radio nav, oops. Get that in there. Uh, let's see. If I can pull up, I don't, actually, I could probably do it from here. What is, 112 eight. So if I key in 112.8 to here, now first, because we're gonna be switching over to here, which is fine, we can pick this up, but go into heading mode first, or else you're gonna start turning all over the place, it could be undesirable. So we go into heading mode. We see, let's get rid of this. So we see that we're on the 268 degree radial. Now I'm not going to go into too much about how to, what a radial is, all that. I'll do an IFR lesson sometimes. However, if we wanted to fly that, we could hit our CDI. See how we have the to and the from down here? We can center this in two. Okay. And it's saying to fly uh, just at, well, we'll call it 85, 0, 85 degrees. Go over here, 0, 85. And we can just fly to it. Keeping it centered. Also, that's just flying with the heading bug. Once we get there, we can hit navigation. And now because we have this set to V-lock, it's going to follow 
what's on your VOR. Okay, so our VOR here, 112 decimal eight, it's in there. Most people now will just use GPS. Honestly, real world, most people use a GPS. However, that's the basic on how to use a VOR. GPS, heading, vertical speed up and down, up, level, and down in the 172 on Xplan. Hope that helps. If you have any questions, feel free to put them in the comments and I will answer them as quick as possible. Thanks guys and have a good one.